Hello everyone, today we are going to try out another new image editing model called OmniGen 2. Now, OmniGen 1, the previous versions, I tested in my previous video on my main channel, you guys can check that out. And OmniGen 2 is actually using a different design, and based on that, it has changed a lot in terms of the AI model architecture. But last week, I tried running OmniGen 2 locally using Python code through the GitHub project right here. As you can see, OmniGen 2 has its own project that allows you to do inferencing as well as different kinds of image or text-to-image editing. This model, well, by the time I tested it, wasn't getting pretty good results. For any image editing, such as coherence and consistency in styles of a character or an object generated in a new image, but I will give it another try in Comfy UI because it's more convenient for a lot of people to use. You just download the models and use the Comfy UI interface like this to generate images or use image editing like this to transform your own image into another form. One thing that needs to be mentioned, the difference between OmniGen 2 and OmniGen 1 is that version 2 adopts the dual path transformer architecture, which means the image and text encoders work separately. By working separately, it allows the computing process to become more efficient. The model handles each task better. This separation of tasks allows the AI models to be fine-tuned for either text or image without messing up the other components within the architecture design of this AI model. So, we will check it out and see what it's all about. There's text-to-image generation and then instruct-guided image editing. Basically, it's in-context image editing, like the previous video we talked about flux context. Now, I have two videos that talk about that. One is the flux context definite basic installation tutorial, and the other one is using flux context to make workflows with images and bring it to video generation. Now, we will be seeing image generation as well in OmniGen 2. It's quite interesting. The text encoder is using Quen 2.5 VL. This is a visual language model, and I've been using this a lot lately. It's pretty good for image captioning tasks. So that's a 3 billion parameter model, and this looks like not the full model weight of the Quen 2.5 VL because I was using the 7 billion size, and there's another larger size. The second part of this AI model is the diffusion transformer model, which costs 4 billion parameters, and each of these files is not very large, actually. You can download this from the Comfy UI documentation page here. I will link that up in the description below. So, for the diffusion model, we are going to download OmniGen 2 FP16. This is a good sign because this is a small model, a very small size model. We don't need to compress it into FP8 because, you know, FP16 is just really handy to handle within 7 gigabytes of file storage. And then the Quen 2.5. This one is also about 7 gigabytes of file storage. So, the total of these two models, the text encoder and the diffusion model, is about 14 gigabytes of file storage. The VAE for these models also uses the same VAE as the Flux VAE. Therefore, if you are using Flux, you can use the same VAE that you've already downloaded. The file structure is going to be in here, the diffusion model subfolder. Inside the models folder, you are going to put OmniGen 2, and of course, the VAE belongs in the VAE folder. The text encoder is also in here for the Quen 2.5 VL, and here I will show how this is located in the File Explorer. So, in the Comfy UI folder, you can go to the Models folder. Once you're in the Models folder, find the Diffusion Model subfolder. This is the one I'm talking about. And once you click that, as you can see, I've already downloaded this when I started recording this video. It's finished downloading. It's 7 gigabytes of file storage, OmniGen 2 FP16. Then go to the VAE. We are going to see the same one as the Flux models. As you can see right here, on the top, the first files are right there. I don't need to download that again because this is also for Flux. And then the text encoder is going to be in this folder. You will see this text encoder, and I've downloaded that as well. This is the Quen 2.5 VLFP16. So, three files mainly for what you need to run this model. 
and this also has similarities with the Flux context models. A lot of image editing has similar capabilities using text prompts, instructions to edit images. One thing that Flux context doesn't have is text to image, which is a very fundamental thing for diffusion image generation models. And it does have this in Omnigen too. And one more thing I need to mention is, where are these workflow example files? Well, you can actually scroll down to this page and browse this section where it talks about the image editing workflow. You can see that the download files are labeled here, but then there's no download link. And this image is actually the workflow with the metadata embedded in this image. So therefore, you can just save this image and drag this image onto the comfy UI diagram layout, and it will be able to load the workflow like what I just showed here. So, let's dive into the comfy UI right now. First of all, as you can see, I got two types of workflows. One is the image editing on the top bar, as you can see the labels here. And then the second one is T2I, which is text to image. Now, this one is a very simple basic workflow from their comfy UI documentation examples. You can see that the custom sampling in here is kind of different. It's not using the K sampler. Let's create a K sampler here. And you will see the difference because we are going to require two conditions for the input parameters and there's one negative parameter prompt here as well. But then, two conditions are actually needed for the Omnigen 2 AI models. Okay, so come to here. When you scroll down a little, you will see that the basic scale scheduler they are using is simple for the scheduler, and the case sampling method is using Euler. So, the same thing goes with flux context as well. And because of these two conditions needed in the input parameters, therefore, we will need the dual CFG guider. And this is what brings us to become the custom sampler advanced, just like the previous examples when Flux 1 DV launched, and then there's custom samplers for Flux as well. This is like the same custom nodes for that in Comfy UI. So we will not use K-Sampler in this case for Omnigen. Next, we are going to see going back to the model loader and the settings in this workflow. As you can see right in here, the diffusion model we load is Omnigen 2 FP16, the Quen 2.5 VL Vision language model we load in the clip loader, and the VAE is the same as the VAE that we are using for Flux. And the good thing is that for Omnigen, you can use negative prompts. So the negative prompts, you can see these two white lines, one is connected to the negative conditions, and then the second line from the same output here is connected to condition two in this dual CFG guider. So therefore, I can see that it is already separate autoregressive of the AI models working, just like what it shows in the promises from their documentation. These two models are working separately and might perform better or might not. We will see. If you want to compare apples to apples, then that is going to be comparing something like Flux Context. So, let's use their template here, this text prompt, and see what we get. And for testing multiple images, I will use Image Preview here, and let's run this. Okay, so just based on text to image, this very simple basic workflow, we are using 11 seconds for generating this image and the cat sitting on the couch like that. And this is all followed from what we have in the text prompt. Looks okay, not pretty detailed. Just one sampling, and then it is based on the 1024 pixels. The best performance to generate is also using this dimension as well. So to be fair, for text prompting, I have used Quen on their official website where they have the chatbot. It also has the Quen 2.5 Max within the Quen 2.5 VL Vision language model within this model. So, I'm using this and generating some prompts based on some images that I have for testing. Let's try. One thing I want to do is use this text prompt from what their full model weight created, and I am going to use that for this text prompt here and see what we get. And yes, this is a pretty long text prompt, but I believe they have optimized it already since they are using the Quen 2.5 VL. And here we got the result. Look at that. This is really close to what I have from my input image of this one that I have upcoming for the WAN 2.1 tutorial, and this looks pretty cool. 
I should save this image and test this with the long video length testing later on, and then, and we are going to the image editing. Adding the other text prompts to say that, giving more instructions to remain the other objects, and the same background. And then I can be able to keep the same background, same character as well, but instead of that, we are only changing the color of the motorbike. This way can be done using OmniGen, the same features as what we have in Flux Context. So, the second scenario that we can use for OmniGen image editing is using a second reference, and I can see that it can use not only two conditions, maybe you can link it up, like three or four, and so on, because it is just a condition here. You know, you can extend the conditions between here or after condition two, you can keep adding another reference latent and then connect those conditions in here. You know, it's just a very simple way you can extend and have more references. So let's try the second option here where we are going to use another second image reference. After I add an object, which is the McLaren sports car, and I have told the AI and given other instructions to change the motorbike to the green McLaren sports car and park it behind the female character in the same pose. Everything for the character, so that means it will be standing on this left side of the image. And then, as you can see here, what you get in here in this image after I generate, we got remaining the same character as what I have from the input image, the mixture of Lamborghini and McLaren in this front. I kind of laugh when I see this image. So, not really accurate for the referencing in Omnigen 2, to be honest and the colorations of this green are a little off compared to what I have in the input image here. As you can see, this is from the input image, it's more metallic green on the car, whereas it is unable to capture the details of the color from what I have in the input image. As you can see, this is like the ink of those bright green ink colors that's put on the car here. So, not really close to what I have with my reference image. It doesn't capture those details, and not even the front light of the McLaren is captured. It just helped me make this random stuff, a mixture of Lamborghini and other kinds of sports cars in this one. Not a big fan of this, and we can try it one more time. By default, these settings here are all coming from the demo workflows in Comfy UI. You guys can check it out once you download that image, load that into the Comfy UI diagram here, and you will see all these values and settings and the second time is more worse. So, no way, this is not going to be what I am looking for as the car is unable to do that. Yeah, so, well, it can replicate this shape kind of copying from this, you know, the airflow from the front of the car, but the bright green, I'm not a big fan of. I'm more into the original way of the metallic green on the image. So this Omnigen is, again, not really, you know, good image editing, not because it creates bad training or anything, but it's just too small of an image model. Like this one is just a seven gigabyte file size and just within four billion size parameters. So you won't expect that to have too much detail and stuff going on with a small size model. As you guys have experienced, if you have enough VRAM to run, for example, one 2.1 AI video, you run the 1.3 billion and compare that with 14 billion. And that is a huge difference between both model sizes. The same theory goes for image models as well. So I don't think, you know, just don't put too high expectations when you're using this. Treat it for fun, just play around with that. Actually, I can do a quick one here. Just load one workflow from Flux Context here. So I got another third workflow again. This is from the basic default workflow from Flux in Comfy UI. And let's load the same image as this one. So I have loaded it here and let's try again the same way, you know, playing around with image editing with the flux context. So I will be going with changing the color of the motorbike first. Here is my instruction prompt. Just say that change the color of the motorbike to light green and see what we get. And let's see what do we get in this simple text prompt. So there you go. One shot only flux context. Just one image generation. I am able to do what I want here. Just changing the color of the motorbike instead of like Omnigen, which will do extra stuff to change the jacket of the lady to another color, or the background is not cohesive like what I have in the source reference image. As you can see in my previous test, just in this tutorial, Omnigen 2, and next, I am going to do the same thing here. I'm going to reference the same image of this McLaren and use the same text prompt here, 
and see what we get. I have changed the input for the second reference in flux context, the same files of this sports car, and I change the reference latent like this way. I feel like this way is better than using one single image stitch. Putting that as you know as a canvas and putting that into the reference. I think using this way for reference latent separately, two images are working more precisely for each image object. I'm going to use the same text prompt and see what we get here. Okay, so this is what we get, and wow, this is way off the chart of the aspect ratios between this car and what we have here. You know, because it should not be that aspect ratio. It's a common problem of image AI models, and the colorations, instead of the ratios, the colorations cannot be replicated using this metallic green. Also, with this generated result, the similarity of the car is close. But just having the same problem as Omnigen 2 when we have the same problems here. I think this is something we have to be aware of in context AI models for images. When we want to modify something, it doesn't really help if you have large proportions of large objects you want to transform in the image. Whereas, at this moment, for example, personally, what I think is easier for image AI models like this in context models, for example, I will bypass this second reference. It will be easier for using one image as a reference and editing an image within here this content rather than using another reference or second image. As in reference objects, sometimes you're getting unexpected results like this. If you, let's say, I'm using the same text prompt and I am not using the reference image, and this way, you will get normal aspect ratios of the car instead of this tiny midget of a car standing behind this lady, and the distance is almost crashing the lady's leg. So yeah, just like some examples like this, it can be able to do within one image reference rather than multiple images. The same thing, the same thing happened to Flux Context. But the only thing that Flux Context is doing better is that it's able to get better segmentations of each object when you are using the text prompts for the instructions. When you have one object you want to change the color of, Flux Context can do very good on it. Or you want to change this to Pixar art style. These are able to get those results, just like you see in other, you know, videos on YouTube where people are showing this. Yeah, of course, you use a very simple text prompt, changing the styles to 2D styles, 3D styles, something like that. But if you want very complex image editing, you want to add another totally different object, it's not going to make it for this AI model. That's why last week I tried Omnigen full model weight. After I tried it, and some of you asked me when to do a test of that one, and I told you guys I deleted it because it's not that quality yet, to be honest. This is since the Omnigen models are on Comfy UI natively. So, you know, it's just a good one to take a quick look at what it can actually do using this model. Better than I asked you guys to go to the GitHub and you go to this GitHub project, download all these source files, and then follow their instruction prompts going through how to set up all of these steps. Once Comfy UI here allowed you to test, yeah, it's a good chance to test it in Comfy UI, so able to do it quickly here. Do I recommend this? or, you know, continue to use Omnigen. I would say for me, to be honest, no. I just tested it this time, just like the full model weight like here, what I just downloaded last week. I haven't published a video of testing this GitHub project, and I just deleted the AI model it after I tested it because I don't feel good. I think in-context AI image model are not ready for production yet, at this moment. I think that will be the next thing they need to do is improvement for this kind of in-context image models like Flux and also for Omnigen and other companies. So yeah, this is what I thought about this model and I will see you guys on the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.